your soul and spirit fly into mystic let your soul and spirit fly into mystic to mystic into mystic into mystic Good evening and welcome back to Mystic Matters. We are the Greater Mystic Chamber of Commerce and yes, to your surprise but not to my surprise, we have Trisha Cunningham back pinch hitting in for Trisha Walsh. Yes. Welcome back Trisha Cunningham. Thank you. And just for everybody uh, so you know, uh, when we went out to look for uh, someone to co-host with me this evening, first person we thought of was Trisha Cunningham. So we Honored. are very grateful that you are back again, Trisha. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> I know she wants to be here, but Trisha is now, as everybody knows, the Director of Development for Fairview, and Trisha, you have an announcement to make. I do. But I know we well, want to go into Kelly Matters. Exactly. exactly. But, I do, but, but before, but but wait, before we go into Kelly, uh, Kelly Mattis, can I just ask, how is Keegan? <gasps> oh. See, I, you, see, there was a method to my madness. My little Keegan, so last yeah. time I was on the show, I was very, very pregnant. And I uh, yes. we was talking about my car raffle for Fairview. And I had a little baby who was born on the 4th of That's July. That's where I wanted you to go. And he, that announcement. Okay, yes. that announcement. What other right, announcement right, is there? And he's right. so darn cute. So yeah. you'll see me out and about. He's been to the art festival. He's been to Taste of Mystic. He's been Great to the Rock Fall Festival. And he's only three months old. He's been out and about. So he's been a busy boy. So the question that we need to ask you is this, does he have red hair? Not all well, in the sunlight, it's okay. kind of got an auburn look to it. So yeah. we're, the jury's out still, we'll see what happens. Yeah. And I've seen this baby right along, but this is for your information. <laughs> uh, so speaking of babies, uh, speaking of children, speaking of tired, okay? That's one <laughs> aspect of it. But we have back on the show, Kelly Mattis, from the aquarium Hello. and welcome back. Thank you. So, so are you nice tired? You. I'm always tired, but that, you know what? We just keep on yeah, going. So so but you know, you exactly. have a great place that you work at, at oh, uh, the Mystic Aquarium and talk about kids and some of the yeah. upcoming events. Tell us what's going on. Well, as you know, it is getting a little cooler out. It's it about is. time to get colder, but the animals at the aquarium love the cold. We have the beluga whales, the seals and sea lions, and they are used to those cold Arctic waters. Yes, they and are. They absolutely love it. So we are open year round. Come by and see us. We're just closed on Thanksgiving Day and Christmas Day. Um, come by and see us. See, see how our animals are frolicking in the cold weather, and everything's open and ready for a lot of fun at the aquarium. Great. Right. And you'll be back uh, in, a, in about a week or so to tell let us know about some upcoming holiday events. Absolutely. There's a ton okay. going on coming up for the holidays, yes. which will hold another couple of weeks. I later. know. But there is one fun event coming up. What's that? If you are a Red Sox fan, and oh my husband boy. is watching, no, okay. we are not at the okay. Mattis household, but um, Wally, the Red Sox mascot, will be oh, at the Wally. aquarium. Oh, Wally. Okay. Really? What is for the Red Sox mascot? It's a big green, mas a big green monster. Oh, oh for yeah. the green wall. Yeah. Wow! You oh wow! 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 wow. wow. <laughs> Welcome back, Trisha Cunningham. Wally. I was trying to figure out Wally. So oh, the yes, the green, yes. the green that monster. So um, well, so yeah, exciting. he's going to be at the aquarium the yeah. this uh, November second, Saturday, right. November second. So coming right up, uh, between about eleven and two, he's going to be doing uh, meet and greets and signing oh, baseballs. Fun. If you want to do that, well, we so have a, it should lot be a lot of fun. Red Sox fans in our area. Yes, we do. We are in that middle <laughs> rows. I've heard yeah. all about it. But uh, <laughs> oh, that's fantastic, Kelly. The Yankees mascot? Do they have a mascot? I don't think so. That's a really good question. That's a Trisha. really good question, Trisha. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think there is. No, but I don't think there's a mascot for the, I don't think for the Yankees. But, but. <laughs> but yeah, so that'll be a lot of fun. Great. And, uh, and it's just fun to come out and, and see the animals, get awesome. some fresh air, and uh, and walk around and enjoy yourself. Beautiful. Okay. November 2nd. November 2nd. Yeah, but check the, always check mysticaquarium.org for all the up-to-date information. Perfect. Okay. Kelly, thank you so thank much. You. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. Sounds perfect. Thank so, you, Trisha, we have another announcement. Yeah, well, also on November 2nd, the Fairview Oddfellows Home of Connecticut, we have our annual Antiques and Collectibles auction. So that's November 2nd. It starts at 5.30, and there's a silent auction from 5.30 right. to 7, and then at 7 o'clock we have a live auction. And we have some amazing items. I will say thank you to Simply Majestic, who 
Every year we have to yeah. help out. You blew yeah. my mind away. Yeah. This, this year, year is going to be donation. something, right? It's this amazing yeah. ring. You, if if you're interested in this ring, you got to yeah. call me and yeah. take a look at it. It's virtually but one of a you'll kind. You'll be competing against me. Yeah, for it's a this. one of a kind it's piece. Yeah. Beautiful. It's opal, 14 karat gold mm -hmm. with this opal and the Bezel shape set. is a uh, really funky shape. It's amazing. So yeah. if you're interested in seeing that or some of the other items that we have, you can give me a call to preview. But some great antiques, some great collectibles. And then lots Great of um, silent auction donations from the community as well. And, and Tricia, so this is your first year with the auction. It is. Okay, but this has been going on for, for 11, 11, this is our 11th, 11th year. year. Mm -hmm. Okay. And at Fairview again. At Fairview. And it raises a good portion of amount of our annual fundraising. It's a very, very successful fundraiser because of our many sponsors, which we appreciate. And Groton Utilities is our lead sponsor this year. So thank you, Groton Utilities. And just, just let us know where it Fairview is located. It's so on Lestertown Road, which is okay. in between the Thames River and Route 12, basically. Um, it kind of, it's this big, huge building that overlooks Thames River, which is where we get our name, Fairview. It's a beautiful, beautiful spot. Um, but it's a, it's a wonderful location, and it's a great, great organization, and we give wonderful care and this fundraiser will help to fund our new memory care unit and enhance our rehab unit as well as go to our unrestricted annual fund Great. so it's a tremendous fundraiser so worthy cause so if you're interested in tickets feel free to reach out to me my number is 860-448-4722 Tricia you're just a natural uh, back on Mystic Matters after uh, uh, Gone for what? Just yeah, not well, even since a year March. yet. Yeah, since March. Yeah, so about right, a, right. Yeah, about a year. But basically, yeah. ten years doing the show. Yeah, yeah, a long, long time. time. It's been. It was fun. Well, speaking of uh, sort of an icon, I, I, I think uh, an organization that's uh, dear to you, yours and my mm -hmm. heart, and that we've known about for years and years and years, the Mystic River Corral. Love them. And we've never had a presence guest from the Mystic River Corral. And this evening, I am pleased to announce. On my left, Ray Brown, the president, president of the Mystic River Corral. Frank Martinetti. Netty? Did I say that right? Martinetti, yes. You know what? I, I, see, Frank, <laughs> would you just <laughs> we say, talked about it first. Just pronounce that last name again. Martinetti. I know. I and, just and love it. I want you to say it in the way it's yeah. really supposed to be pronounced. Yeah. Well, if you're a purist, Martinetti. I yeah. love that. I, I love like that. that. Thank I you like very that. much, oh, Frank. <laughs> and your your title with the I'm the Corral? artistic director, which okay. more commonly known as conductor or music director of the okay. <laughs> You simplified that yes. uh, for us this <laughs> evening. Well, welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And uh, this evening we're going to be talking about really uh, how did the Mystic River Corral start? That's number one. And you're going to tell us a little bit about some upcoming events, too. So who wants to take the lead on this? I'll go ahead. Since I you am the, the president, president <laughs> I am. That's correct. <laughs> now, uh, we're How very long have you been president, first of all, Ray? Uh, this is my second year okay. as president. Right. It's my 12th year with the group, with the however. Okay. Wow. So it's okay. been a couple of years. But uh, we're really proud. This is our 30th yeah, year of uh, providing quality musical entertainment to the area. And we d actually have some members with us now who are original to the group. Wow. So they could probably tell you more the onus behind starting the group. But I think a group of folks wanted to get together and, and uh, have a little bit of fun and perform some quality music. And, and they did. We've been going ever since. That's terrific. How big is your group? How many people? We normally hover around 40. We've been pretty lucky the last couple of years. We are very close to 50 people right wow. now. Wow. How do you get involved? Is, can just anybody join the Mystic River Corral? It's quite easy. We're an audition group. We do ask to hear people, but one of the things that I've prided ourselves on in my time with the group has been that we are fairly open access. We've got people who are borderline professionals. We have people who are singing in a chorus for the first time. And what I find, you know, working with adults, adults understand what it is and whether they can handle it or not. And when I audition people, I listen to what they can do with their voice and their ear and their brain and their eyes. And then I usually just say, great, welcome. Sometimes I'll say to someone, why don't you sit in tonight? You know, sit on a rehearsal, experience it, and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. And we can talk at the end of the night or even the end of the second week. And I find that people usually figure out, yes, I can do this, and occasionally say, this is a, this is a little beyond where I am right now. But we take auditions beginning of each semester. We're happy to have new faces. We've gotten several new faces in the past year, which has been just terrific. So how often do you practice as a group? Every Monday night we practice from... Every Monday That's round. a commitment. That's no. A from okay. From uh. <laughs> the week after Labor Day until the end of April, basically. 
Okay. But it's it's quite a long commitment. We give yeah. two concerts a year, uh, one in, in January and one in late April or early May. And we also do some community events. You've probably seen yeah. us at the Mystic the Stroll. The Mystic Stroll yes, every you know, year. Every, yeah. at, yeah. Yeah. In the park. It yeah. would not be the yes. Stroll without the Mystic River Corral, yes. I have we to have say. We have been there yeah. year after year. Yes. After, and sometimes it is cold. Oh, yes. yes. It, it is, is cold. <laughs> yes. Yes. It is. It is we know. very cold down <laughs> yeah. there. But it's, you know, you guys, you have a, such a following yeah. that there's so many people around you that. You uh, really make a big impact right. at that event. So yeah, well, we enjoy The community doing appreciates it. it. We enjoy doing it. And one of Ray's predecessors once was renowned in our history for giving out 200 flyers during the Mystic Stroll. <laughs> so he was quite industrious that year and took I advantage so. of a large crowd. But so, Ray, who picks the music? Frank. Frank picks the music. <laughs> oh, yeah. well, that one, that's, I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty okay. simple. All right. So, um, it, it, so is there a so Frank? You're, you solely pick the music, and that's there's not a panel that uh, you have to go to or a board of directors that no. has to put the seal of approval on. No, I mean it's a dialogue. We, we as a board, we talk about a few things like you know what concerts in the past have generated the most singer enthusiasm and audience enthusiasm what concerts have done well financially at the box office, you know, what works, what have we done, what have we not done. When they hired me, um, classical choral music is, is full of certain genres, such as masses and requiems, and That's right. they just done um, a lot of requiems. And when I was hired in 2008, they said, please don't do any requiems for a while. We've done quite a few. Mm -hmm. So we haven't done a requiem. We've only done one requiem since 2008. Okay. But um, we tend to do a winter concert with orchestra or chamber orchestra and then a spring concert with smaller forces so the winter concert is usually at one or more major works and then the spring concert is something you know different every year uh, last year's spring concert we did a, a concert of music for classical guitar and choir mm -hmm. which was really unique and right. really special different. because guitar is such an awesome instrument and it's such a big part of American society but you hardly ever see guitar and chorus come together uh, this year the spring concert is going to be uh, opera, operetta, and Broadway favorites, and the winter concert oh, is choral orchestral music of Schubert, Britton, and Czerny. Okay. And that's right. the winter concert. Yeah. And when is the winter concert? January 19th, um, 3 p.m. 3 p.m. At Harkness Chapel. At Harkness Chapel. Yeah, How can people go about getting tickets and finding information? They can go on our website, yeah. which is, is mysticrivercorral.org, okay. and they can order tickets that way. All right. Okay. And are they for sale now? We can take orders okay. for them. Okay. We don't have hard copy tickets yet, but we so certainly can order them. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, and then you can bet, uh, reach out to them again. Yeah, because that shows yeah. January, January 19th, you yes. said? Because mm -hmm. that would be a great uh, holiday present, a great Christmas present. So if people order them now yeah. and present them to someone for a Christmas gift, that would be a great we gift. We keep trying to convince yeah. our members of that as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and uh, it would be a good idea. We. Um, we do anticipate a larger crowd than normal because of the anniversary, because right, the numbers yeah. of people in the corral are, are up a little bit than usual, and because we're collaborating with one of the choral groups from Ledger High School on this concert. So that oh, oh that's, that's a yeah. nice touch for this yeah. winter concert. Because that's winter coming concert, up. Yeah. 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 yeah, I know from the stroll, the Ledger group is amazing because yeah. they always right. come out to the stroll as mm -hmm. well, and right. they're just a, a tightly knit group. And they're an amazing group. Yeah, and we yeah. we collaborated with uh, Fitch and Stonington High Schools just. Uh, two years ago. Wow. That's going to be beautiful. Great. So, Ray, you are the president. I am. Okay, of a, of the board of directors. Yes. So, what exactly is are your responsibilities? Do as little as I can humanly <laughs> do and But it's a keep great title. It is. Oh, it's a wonderful <laughs> title. I've been, I've been looking like, for like that I title for over the years now. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, uh, my biggest single job is to uh, hold the board meetings and try to keep as many people engaged as I can on the day-to-day okay. -day business of the uh, of the corral. All right. And are you also a, one of the singers as well? I am. Okay. And how have you been doing that for the 12 full twelve years? Okay. Yes, I was the bass section leader for a number of years. Then they asked me if I would be willing to be the vice president, which I was, and then I moved on up to president. So yes, I'm very okay. active member of the corral. The, so board, the board has a real role to play in, in that uh, doing this kind of thing is, is expensive. And, yeah. you know, hiring an orchestra is expensive. Renting a hall is expensive. Right. And like most arts groups, ticket sales only cover, you know, half the cost or less of, of production. So the board spearheads an annual fundraising campaign and tries to raise $12,000 every year to keep the organization strong. And that, right. that's quite an undertaking. Right. It's a lot of well, hard Well, I know I've been... Uh, 
I seem to um, put an ad in every year. What does that go to? Or orchestra, or soloists, mm -hmm. hall okay. rental. Okay, right. Thank you for that. Oh, you're, well, you're welcome. <laughs> I just cut the check, and then I'm not really sure where that it, where that goes to. I think it's a a program ad for the concert. For the concert. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I just want to. Yes. <laughs> I always do it every year. Okay, mm -hmm. and I'm happy to do it. Um, but I was just, you know, I want to know how what's being funded, and, and so that um, helps keep the ticket costs low. Right. As well, our, our ticket costs are very yeah. low considering right. yeah. what you get, and and for comparable groups, we we're very affordable. So with this extra fundraising and with the local business support, that helps you know to fund your expenses, but also keeping the ticket costs low. It seems it makes it possible. Yeah. And our support comes yeah. from three streams. You have ticket sales. You have the dues that members pay, mm -hmm. and then we have donations okay. and advertising. So members pay members pay when okay. you're part of the corral itself. Mm -hmm. You there, you're. It's a membership requirement. Exactly. Okay. It's like a club. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's a cooperative, essentially. You know, we all have to do the work and raise yeah. the money and find the resources to, be invested. to make this thing happen on a number of levels. Yeah. Right. That's good. That's good. That's a good model. So, are there um, a number of young people getting involved as well? We've had a number of uh, high school and, and college age people. In fact, my daughter sang with us for a number of years when she mm -hmm. was in high school and and while she was attending junior college. And we actually have, for the first time, a young woman who's in the eighth grade Aww. singing with us this year, and we're very excited about that. And what about the wow. geographics mm -hmm. of the group? All over this area. Okay, so mm -hmm. southeastern Connecticut. Absolutely. So you don't Rhode need Island. to live in Mystic you along the Mystic not. River no. to be no. in the Mystic River Corral. No. You can be from anywhere in south count southeastern mm -hmm. Connecticut, New York County. Wherever you feel comfortable driving to for our rehearsals. All right. Beautiful. Now this little eighth grader, where did where does she come from? Yeah. It's very unusual. She found us. You know, mother found us on the on the internet and wanted to know if she could audition. And, and I thought about it and said, of course. Um, I, I'm a teacher. I'm, I'm a college professor, and I was a public school music teacher for ten years. So I was concerned about the age appropriateness of the setting, but also, you know, vocally, a, a younger voice trying to keep up with older voices could easily get overtired and overtaxed. Right. Right. But I've touched base with her middle school director and with her mother and. She uh, she's holding her own and she's doing well and she's not pushing and she seems to be having a great time being really stretched. It's very unusual and I'm yeah. really glad that we found her. It's That's great. That's perfect. Yeah. Now, do you find some of these uh, some of the members don't come and do their homework? Do, can you tell <laughs> as a conductor? Yes. Uh -oh. <laughs> I have, yeah, listen, it's, you have to ask the hard questions. I mean, you probably sitting back or conducting obviously can tell those people that haven't practiced at home mm -hmm. and they so how much requirement of practice do you feel it needs to be your voices need to be to come into the uh, um, corral and produce a uh, wonderful uh, set every person has their own level that mm -hmm. they need to attain personally I'm the type that I need a lot of work so I need to right, work at some a, point on my music every day it, it may be as something as simple as while I'm working, listening to our uh, rehearsal CD. Right. Or it may be something more formal, like sitting down with the CD, with my score in front of me and going that deeply. But every day I need to put in some sort of time on it. But that's just me. Do you think, is that the average, or? I don't think so. Pe people have to know what works for them. Everybody they have has to have, their own yeah, system. Yeah, you find your way. You know, one of the nice things, as Ray said, technology has helped us give people resources. We can send out YouTube performances of the music. We can give out CDs with their, fi fi their part played on a MIDI keyboard. Um, you know, we can share recordings. Uh, we can post resources on our website. And people take advantage of what they need, you know, to do the work. But some people don't need to practice at all between rehearsals. And, and some folks need to put in quite a lot of time. I mean, that's one of the things I'm proudest of is that we have this fairly diverse group of people very experienced amateur singers, people who have done professional work, and people who are in their qu choir for the first time, and we managed to put on a, a very strong performance while being that inclusive. Now, Frank, do you give them homework, basically, before they leave? Sometimes. Okay. Often it's just, you know, reinforce something. Know where you struggled tonight and, and check out the recording. To find, find what you need to do. Sometimes it is, would you please listen to this with your score twice before next right. week, or take care of this, or next week we're going to do this. Uh, again, we're dealing with busy adults who have a lot to do, and it's easy to not have time for that. 
and some folks need it, some folks don't. And I think with adult learners, knowing yourself is the most important thing. Right. So out of this group, too, uh, I am sure there's some friendships that have become lifelong friendships ha from this group as well. Definitely. And so how important is that? Many people, you know, have good, some people socialize quite extensively outside of the corral. Some people really don't, but they all seem to feel very, very close to one another, which is yeah. it's really great uh, because you're working together side by side for weeks and weeks on end, and and, and you make it happen. You know, uh, uh, we have one woman in the corral, a long-term member who is is blind, and she says these people were part of my family. This is this is one exactly. community in which she is an integral part of and this is means a lot in her life. Right, right. Well with 30 years there's there is uh, a lot of those stories too right. uh, that make up uh, really what the corral is is all about not yes. only the music but the relationships with uh, each other and of course the relationships with the people that come uh, to visit because I'm sure I mean to hear uh, the, the beautiful music but I am sure you have a following. We do. Oh they do. We do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And in we're a very always strong trying to grow that following. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Now, how often, uh, for, for members, how long do they tend to stay members for and stay part of the corral? Well, as I said, we do have some people that have been there the entire time. Yeah. Many of them predated my arrival, so we've got a lot of people, 15, 20, maybe 25 years. Wow. Most of the people... That's a that's long amazing. time. It is. It is. To, to have that sort of commitment and yeah. to, to retain it that long really right. is. Now, what's your favorite in the 12 years? What's been your favorite Mystic River Corral memory, if you will? Or event? My or favorite concert piece of music was when we did Mozart's Requiem. See, we're mm. going back to the Requiem thing. I just, I just like that yeah, one. Yeah, that is beautiful, yeah. though. That's my favorite piece to perform. It's my favorite recording that we made and, and I have a copy of it that I oftentimes listen to again mm -hmm. at work right. while I'm working. I just, I, I find the music very powerful for whatever reason it, it speaks to me. It's directly. moving. It's, that's it's a moving piece, yeah. it is. Very that's one yeah. that I, you know, I'm not very well versed, yeah. but that's one that I, yeah, that I know. I know that one. That one's just that amazing. One. Great yeah. Great yeah. And how about you, Frank? Yeah. I mean, as a, uh, from the conductor's side, you're listening to these voices, but obviously you have some favorites. I do, and, and that's really hard. You know, every summer I, I'm picking music for the next year to right. year and a half. It's right. quite an ordeal to think, what can we pull off? What's going to really flatter us? What's going to stretch us? What's going to attract an audience? What do I want to do? And it's, it's a great process, but it, it's an agonizing process okay. at times. Um, the music we're doing right now, the Schubert Mass in B-flat, is, is, is a new favorite. It's, it's a beautiful, exquisite piece, uh, really complex but not long. That's really nice. I think uh, since I came in 2008, my favorite concert is the one we did with the Conbrio Choral Society in Old Saybrook and with the University of Bridgeport Chamber Singers. I direct the choirs at right, University of Bridgeport. Right. And we did um, the New England premiere of Leonard Bernstein's Mass. Now the Bernstein Mass is this huge elaborate theater piece um, that isn't presented that often because it is so huge and there's, there's a new concert version available, you know, scaled down version. Right. And we did it and it was, it was about um, you know, 80, 90 singers, 26 piece orchestra, it was a blast. Um, it was really a special piece. It was a special two performances, one in Groton, one in Old, S in Old Lyme. And that was the thing I really come back to as a memory so far. You do two concerts a year, major mm -hmm. concerts a year. Uh, is that something that you would think of down the line expanding? Or is that just so much to ask for? Well, again, we do the f two formal concerts. We do what we call our outreach. Mm -hmm. performances. We've sung at Fairhaven, so we, Fairhaven. we get around mm -hmm. the area quite a bit. But I think the two major concerts is probably what our group could handle. I mean, okay. the expense, the time involved. Mm -hmm. And when you do a major work, that takes up a lot of time, a lot of energy, but that really is what makes it all worthwhile. It's, it's the challenge, as Frank right. mentioned, stretching yourself. Right. That's really what, what makes it worthwhile. And, and when you are able to master a, a great work of music and mm -hmm. you perform it, you realize we've really done something special. Mm -hmm. 
it's somewhat counterintuitive in some ways. You would think that you know concerts that are full of, say, Broadway tunes that everybody knows would, mm -hmm. would sell really well and would draw more singers. And we find it's the choral orchestral masterworks mm -hmm. that draw in more singers that semesters and a larger audience. And pe people are intrigued by that. Well, yeah, they they there's something yeah. different for them because I think that whole Broadway thing has been uh, it's a redundant. You know, there's a lot mm -hmm. of uh, uh, other. Um, types of that kind of music and I think yeah. when people uh, buy a ticket they want to see something uh, not only that they can relate to but also uh, that would inspire and motivate mm -hmm. them as Inspires well. Them and a chorus doing music that was written for chorus mm -hmm. you know that is idiomatic I think we to that. We talked about that Frank you, yeah. you, uh, at the beginning of the show is be basically getting back to just the basics of music how, however that interpretation may be and you bring that out in them but the basic wonderful mm -hmm. music yeah. you know it's when you start changing it around that I think sometimes right. uh, people I know I walk away from um, mm -hmm. certainly that's so the, the the people that come to see the shows what is their age group curious many of them mirror the age group of the of the performers okay we, we get a lot of people in, in their middle years okay so older. so looking forward we'd like to get uh, more people involved uh, in the younger generation I think that's key too to keep, uh, keep that growing, keep it, growing and it and we have quite a few I, I think I think some of that reflects the community as a whole you know uh, young people in Connecticut are often leaving to go away for college right so just as they get involved in the community they leave for at least four years and then come back and yeah that's, and then so that's come back that's one of the challenges you know we've had high school students and they leave as they should right and, you and know, then they come back we've had college students my own college students at UB many of them don't stay in the area mm -hmm. you know do they stay or not and what kind of roots do they put down in the community right so give us we only have a few minutes Ray give us mm -hmm. our, the two uh, dates for your uh, concert again January 19th okay, that's your winter concert that is our winter and concert. where is that at that is at Harkness Chapel mm -hmm. which is at Connecticut College what time Three o'clock in okay. the afternoon, and there's ample parking, and yeah. it's a beautiful facility if you've yeah. never gone to a concert there. And our other one is April April twenty seventh. Twenty seventh, thank mm -hmm. you. Also a Sunday at three o'clock, and yeah. it's in the heart of Mystic at Mystic Congregational, Congregational Church. Very nice. Yeah. Well, this has been fantastic. I, I don't know about you, Tricia, but I just love having new people on the show. Yeah. Well, it was great. Um, one for me to right, be back. One for you to be back, and, and, yeah, and, and thank having you so much. It was great having you two on the Frank, show. Frank, you know, I think this is a concert that I'm going to come to. Please do. Okay, because now I match the face with the conductor, and <laughs> I know the music. I know and the you're music. getting excited, right? I know the music. You know, right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, Ray, nice to meet you, and, and congratulations nice you. on your two years of uh, presidency. <laughs> thank you. Uh, for the corral. And, Tricia Cunningham, I hope we can reach out to you again. Again, my uh, to pinch it. My uh, pleasure to do that anytime. And as you can see, I'm losing my voice, and that's uh, uh -oh. you know, after, uh, of course, a parade and yeah, some and other you have, things. You have Christmas coming up, so you better rest up. that voice. And uh, we've got, a, I think, one more show, or maybe a couple more shows. I'd have to uh, check with uh, Frank in the back. Uh, we are Mystic Matters in the Greater Mystic Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and so and. I'll see you November 2nd at the auction. But the if auction. you're interested, uh, give me a call and hopefully Absolutely. we'll see you at the Antiques and Collectibles auction. Thank you, Tricia, so much. Thank you. Good evening. Soul and spirit fly. Thank you. Into mystic. Let your soul and spirit fly into mystic. Into mystic, into mystic.